Katie. <laughs> Milo. You're offensive. Oh, how rude. <laughs> no, but you are considered hugely offensive I am in considered. Britain. Yes. Um, yes. Why? I think I'm considered offensive because if I think something and I feel something, then I will say it. And I'm not really bothered. So, it, just, it just builds <laughs> up. And it yeah. comes out. And it, it doesn't really matter to me if, if what I say then is offensive to you. That's mm -hmm. your choice. I don't really give offence. You choose to take, you take it. it. You make better choices. So the onus is on you to improve yourself and find me less offensive. Um, because it's <laughs> unlikely <laughs> we that I'm going to stop. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, for instance, you did what is... I'm not just flattering you to say this. My favourite media stunt of the last decade, which is you got fat... Yes. And then got thin again, yes. just to demonstrate that fat people are lazy. And fat disgusting. people are lazy and disgusting, yes. and it's all your fault. Yes. And if you want to, you can choose to be thin. Correct. So people always say, "Oh, you're so lucky to be skinny," or you know, huge heifers would say, "Oh, well." I don't they know do if, start I don't know if they talk like that. Like that. No, 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 they do because it's something to do with the vocal cords. When there's always a waiter, <laughs> I can like eight chins. <laughs> no, 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 they do. When you get fat and you have that waddle, it's they all call on it there. waddle. Yeah, and and you have like uh, there's I don't know, it's pressure on the vocal cords, but they do. They have a sort of guttural, <laughs> phlegmy. <laughs> It's a reverberative effect to their so voice. Say, like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it runs in my family. You know, oh, my mother was big. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Boogaloo. You didn't she need hasn't to be. Passed on, yeah. She hasn't passed on fat genes. She's passed on indolence. Yes. She's oh, passed on oh, they, laziness. <laughs> they use their surname and they go, oh, us, you know, Camerons, we were all big. You know, yeah. we were, we're a big yeah. family. Oh, though, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, as if it's some sort of genetic McCallans inheritance. The are all big girls. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and then they'll say, well, you're so lucky to be slim. So I thought, right, okay, hold on. I will put on what was it so four stones so in your money kind of like 50 pounds to it's prove a lot. It's a lot. that if i sit on my ass and i shove the fridge in my face i can be as fat as you guys and i was i thought i would have like 40 pounds on these and i was like yes i'm gonna have this huge it's not boards. how weight goes on is it no it went it's on here gentle, with this massive it's, gunt yeah it's this gentle uh americans won't understand gunt actually so for gunt think cankle which is a cross between your calf and your ankle. Oh, I know what a cankle, a cankle. is. So no, a I know what a gunt, cankle is from the last election. A gunt election. is uh, That's in a... this department <laughs> between your Yeah, yeah, thanks. Good, <laughs> lovely. Gut um, and your... Yeah, yeah, yeah good, otherwise. Good. So you had a gun. Places you've never been. You had... Oh, no, not never. Just <laughs> not for some time. Seldom. And never with any pleasure. <laughs> So yeah, I put on four stone, three months on, three months off to say, listen, you've got no excuse. Mm -hmm. If you want to be slim, get slim. You can just walk. It's, it can be hard work, <laughs> but it, it can be hard work, but most of, I mean, it's mostly diets, mostly discipline. But also let's not celebrate being fat either. You know, this idea well, that, this is you know, why... being fat is the new marvellous thing. Be proud of your bodies. I'm body positivity. Oh, body positivity. I'm beautiful fat on acceptance. the inside and out. No, no you're not. No. On the inside, it's no. a whole world of yellow. <laughs> it's cutting out, sweetie. And this is why. Joking aside, although I suspect in the course of this interview we will be, be quite <laughs> unable to what? put joking aside, um, <laughs> this is why I liked it so much because it wasn't just an extraordinary demonstration. Uh, it was you, you put your money where your mouth was, which was wonderful <laughs> to see, um, and so few people bother to do so. Um, but in addition to that, you were drawing attention to something pernicious, dangerous. Actually, it's very destructive, mm. um, and it is this idea that we should um, that we should congratulate people for poor life choices to make them feel better because the primary purpose of of public life and of education and of um, advertising is self-esteem rather than self-improvement. Absolutely. And, and this is, uh, JC Penney is, is putting these videos out with fat women encouraging their own customers to die sooner. Hmm. And that's not funny. It's not funny. And if you come from a country where you have a nationalised health system, so a, a health system that for all the stupid people... I just about remember how yeah, bad it was. I remember. <laughs> uh, a dark place that you left behind. Yeah, Thank you very much for leaving is, me there, Milo. Is, I'm going back for Thanksgiving. Oh, Joe, how very generous of you to come back for a couple of days. <laughs> no, no, to There's come back, me, no, wait, fighting to come back a fight. For you an American wa holiday. Yes, you're wafting <laughs> in your bloody Gucci loafers. Imagine you're the bloody second coming and then off Gucci you toddle. These are, well... Um, you, you abandoned no, me in Britain, Milo. Else. We um, shall pick up on that later. My, 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 my thought is if you have a nationalised healthcare system where people perceive Ferragamo. that treatment, important, uh, is free <laughs> at the point of use, but for them that means free yes, because they're not that yes. smart. And therefore they say, well, 
if I have a, a stomach stapling on the NHS, yeah. which means on me, yes, of course, because yes. I pay the taxes. Well, in this country, 50% of people don't pay tax at all. I'm guessing in, in Britain is something so, similar. Yeah, so they say, well, if I have a stomach, uh, stomach stapling operation, that will save money for the NHS in the long run because I won't be diabetic and I won't and it's like no, no. it's the wrong side of the balance just, sheet just like, like, I, it will <laughs> reduce more costs but it doesn't create a saving yes no yes. it's like I had a rough childhood but it didn't make me walk through life with a packet of crisps in one hand and an ice cream scoop in the other because you know I decided not to be a no. victim not to give into it and not to make my traumas and other people's burden yeah you know and I, you always wonder you know people so you see these programs about it's sort of welfare porn <laughs> so it's like oh we're the poorest of the poor and we're so fat and oh it's because cheap food is all oh, makes you fatter and it's like no just eat less of all of it just just eat less and buy some yes. celery yes exactly well, they always, like, well they're always like oh, we can barely afford to eat you know i go without so that my children can eat and you look at her and she's like a 20 ton tessa you have like gone no, you without do not. anything you have not there is nothing tessa. you've been without you've eaten your own tv <laughs> <laughs> when did it the reason you're so miserable the things you don't have in life yeah. you've eaten them all yes exactly <laughs> so that's it yes that, that I do have car, a bit you keep eyeing up <laughs> you burp and tyres <laughs> come out no, so it's it's, a one good thing is it does act as a sort of cleansing of the ways for me. So if I bump into fat people in the street, mm -hmm. they see me coming, they know that I can't stand fat people, and they kind of there's a parting of the ways. See, I like this. It's a bit like I've Moses. Done something similar with feminism. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. So pussy hats part at the way. No, exactly. exactly. Well, it's quite an expression to say. But no, I, I, <laughs> No, but it's it's like um it's like a filter. Yeah. You've applied a filter, like a search criterion to your life. <laughs> I've googled people, I've googled fat out of my life. Filtered it out. <laughs> just just entered a filter, and now people just it must be lovely. Short it must people, be lo ginger people, it, filtering my life as I go. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm talking to myself. Yeah, um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> An older, more haggard version of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love this false modesty you have too. I mean, you show up with the most expensive haircut I've ever seen. This beautiful clothes, wonderful <laughs> things like, oh, I'm so haggard. Give me a break, <laughs> sister. You know, like, my God. Anyway. Anyway. Go to America for uh, Restoration Weekend um, and you're probably experiencing um, slack-jawed horror from your new American friends at just how awful this is, the state of free speech mm. is in Britain. You, the, the ability to, to say things like you just did about fat people, yeah. to crack jokes about... In my view, fat people and gingers are the two classes that we must at all costs protect against political correctness. We must. It must be okay to mock fatties and gingers <laughs> until the end of human civilization, <laughs> until the last person gets zapped by the alien space ray. It has to be okay to mock it's fatties and gingers. Say, you know, because it's a truth. So, so it's an unspoken truth. So therefore, it's my obligation and my duty <laughs> to, to, to speak, speak it. it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Milo. But what are you babies, doing in England? <laughs> ginger babies, we all know as mums, and you'll identify with this as a mother, uh, that we, nobody wants a ginger baby. Nobody wants one. And when um, my last baby came out, I looked down because Mark has uh, some ginger elements in his beard, and I always say to girls, right. "You're worried about you might have the recessive gene be, and not Jesus, know it." Yeah, and the thing is with Mark, he's brown haired, but his beard some traces of ginger. No, that's just the sun. Because even not, I have that. No, no, even I get it. No, Milo, there's no ginger in you, darling. You're too fabulous. There's never been any ginger in me. I can <laughs> confirm. <laughs> So, Mark had a ginger beard. A fact. I'm telling you. You're so no I was like, black right. Are there ginger black? No. No, there's no ginger. No ginger. Just because black people are fabulous, so they're yes, not ginger. They no ginger. So uh, when Max came out, and then I saw him, there was some sort of blood on his head. Don't faint. It's okay. And I was like, oh my god, he's redhead. <laughs> like, Give that baby away. Because it's iron rich, so it looks a little what? gingery. You know? it's like a but little I was, yeah. So it's like ginger babies, like regular are babies, you? but so much harder to love. Oh yeah. <laughs> Change Are that you, baby. Exchange me a baby. Give me a I need a pretty child. Baby. Yes. Are you yes. the only woman in British public life uh, who's prepared to accept that, that she was, was, for at least a moment, mm -hmm. horrified by her own child's ugliness? <laughs> oh, I'm okay with it. Because I know that other mums have always said, the only thing I don't want, people say, well, I'm hoping it's not disabled. I'm hoping it's not down. But you can but deal actually, with that because they, you get sympathy that. for that But they stuff, say, you know? I really hope it's not ginger. Because that's like the worst of all. And is. I'm totally with that. Like, nobody because Down wants syndrome ginger. kids are very loving. But you know, they're affectionate. Yes. They, ginger you know, kids, just ginger kids bitter, are just bitter, ugly. End up jihadis. Can you dress them in they pink? End up, no. no. 
No, 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 what colour? What colour can you put on a ginger baby? There's nothing. On a ginger person? Only a bag on its head. That's all you can do. <laughs> the only thing That's they the look good in is do. black plastic. Did you know they shut down the only sperm bank in... It's the biggest sperm bank in the world. I don't mm. know if you've facilitated any of it. No. Oh, I don't need the money. Spread, spread your beauty. Spread your beauty. It's your mission. <laughs> well, Get in those sperm banks, Milo. It would be sort of a gift. I should I should. I should, it is a gift I should to the nation. spunking far and wide. Spunk far and Shouldn't wide, I? darling. Okay, fine. So in I'll, Norway... I'll stop donating. They've started rejecting. They reject <laughs> gingers. The you cannot donate if you're a ginger because there's no demand for the sperm. <laughs> you are. Darwin so, had something. He had something. You know about gin, uh, ginger jihadis, don't you? I do. You do. And this is something that the intelligence services, um, we're wandering way off topic, but this is my favourite. No this topics. is my favourite subject. With me, darling, there's this no This is my favourite subject. You know that um, the intelligence services, the police and all that, will never admit this, but they know privately. If you have a ginger, um, a red-headed kid, and he comes home one day and he's got new friends called Ahmed <laughs> and Muhammad. It's time to... St <laughs> Muhammad. It's time... <laughs> it's like a throat disease, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's time to start worrying. Inshallah. It's a, I don't think they call it. It's time to start worrying because they, they are vastly disproportionately more likely to become jihadis. I think, well, if you're a ginger, you're ostracized. And as soon as you're mm -hmm. ostracized, you're an easy target for kind of making into some form of jihadi. I reckon they're quite crap jihadis, though. Yeah, you get they the still impression look a bit rubbish, even when they're dressed up in the whole ISIS they're garb. They're still ginger. Even in a suicide jacket, they look shit. Even in a ISIS doesn't jacket. really want them. This so is the thing about it's ginger like puts people. them on the front lines. You ginger know? people this don't even do suicide jackets well. You this know? is. My this point is about why no ISIS pink. wants them because yeah. it wants the it wants the uh, the, the, the the ground truth. You, know, you know, you know, in uh, <laughs> that, that great scene in the South Park movie where the you know where the, the front line troops and you're like that's awkward. Wipe you know, them out. For, for ISIS and Al Qaeda, it's just you know throw the gingers over the wall. <laughs> but this may be why um, you have you know what these words say jihad Jane, jihad Jenny, and yes. and Samanda Luthwaite, um, the <laughs> uh, that? the Black Widow. Oh who yes, is yes, a yes. ginger hair. All these women are ginger hair. They all go over get Somali boyfriends i mean that i can understand um and then they just you no know, they become they become a they become evil criminal masterminds there's a there's a there's a, a network the there's a network of ginger women uh, <laughs> secretly running isis <laughs> <laughs> if you needed any more reason and then to sometimes hate them. magazines do you know beautiful they do these sort of campaigns like with fat people where they do pictures of fat people looking good yes. you know which we all know is it takes is a, a lot of arranging in appropriate and ways photoshop mm, all of the rest of it Good shot. Yeah, that, and these people aren't people really too. fat to begin with. In some cases, they'll kind of like round it out a little bit. They just use regular models, just just puff them out a little bit because because fat people just don't photograph. You know? So on the jihadi front, I was like last vampires. Week. You just take the picture. This is this is it, 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 if, if if God were real, we'd live in a world where photo where, where cameras just didn't pick them up. <laughs> it'd, be like, it'd be like vampires. You take a picture, and all you'd see is the wall. <laughs> I was supposed to be beheaded, <laughs> and then you've gone. You've gone. There is no hope for us. There is no hope for All us. All right, so we've done our two favourite subjects. Yes, now we're doing jihadis. I'm, all, I'm still no, on no, jihadis. No, 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 no. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. This is the kind of thing for which you get in trouble in Britain, and the kind of conversation you're only allowed to have on television yes. for about... 60 seconds before oh, they cut seconds, you off yeah. and start saying how offensive and unnecessary and like oh well and those yeah, are not the views do, of the program yeah those are not the views of good <laughs> morning know, britain or whatever the guys, it is. You know, guys like <laughs> shut her up shut her up we're gonna get taken off the air we're gonna have so many good plays um, these are the sorts of conversations that normal people everywhere across the western have. world have not obviously in as good outfits or with as, with such good hair as or Romanian or, hookers. Or, no one does this stuff. Flatter yourself, Ukrainian. They're, they're, no, they're more expensive. They're far. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble with my Russian friends. But Ukrainian Be in trouble, darling. Ukrainian me, prostitutes yeah. um, are, are are very very much more desirable and so, expensive. Oh, well, so you, you could be a Ukrainian prostitute. Um, no, what I wanted to ask you about. Oh. Oh, that was smoothly done. We need that. We need to coordinate that better. So no, you... no, 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 no. It's fine. I'm yeah, but just... no, but it means I could get one in while you're doing. You see. Well, you so should we have. Yeah. Um, go. What we need to do. I, I don't plan these things ahead of time. I just needed a drink. Um, what we need to do is talk, is talk about the the um, extraordinary fight that you have to speak your mind on national mm. television in the UK. Now, in the US, this is a different set of problems. There's a, there's a, there's a, there are appropriateness problems. There are sort of uh, propriety. But in the UK, there's actually a legal mm. element to this. Mm. And for expressing feisty, <clears throat> provocative, funny, entertaining points of view, views which, importantly, and this is, cri this is critical, 
are shared by millions of Brits. For expressing those points of view, you've attracted the attention not just of columnists from the left or, or the censorious forces of, of corporate whatever, but from the law, from yeah. the police. Yes, the so actual police. The actual real police. The, the actual boys in blue. This is then, and this is going to this is going to blow Americans' minds. This is going to completely. This is, they're going to they're going to not understand this at all. Um, but this is a, a critical thing to understand to understand the difference really um, in the free speech arguments between this country and Britain, and it is that the state can, at the barrel of a gun require that you stop upsetting people and hurting their feelings mm. or at least intimidate you into not speaking your mind as forcefully under the threat of arrest or imprisonment mm. so talk to us about what's what's the most unobjectionable thing you said that nonetheless attracted the attention of law enforcement so I'd say, I mean, there's a number of candidates for, yes. for this award. Well, I've been following most you for years, and I think thing. they're all ridiculous. Yes, but, of course. But, but what's, what's the most commonplace some. opinion that should yes. never have been controversial? Yes, uh, I think, um, well, I think the one that kind of had the biggest reaction and that I don't see the need for, I was talking about migrants crossing the Med. Mm -hmm. And in the column that I wrote, and bear in mind, I was a, a columnist for a national newspaper. So I was a paid, retained columnist for a national newspaper, 500 words column. And I wrote about the fact that these migrants, no matter what, they make it across the Med. You mm -hmm. know, given all that's gone on, given they've been travelling for weeks without food, given... Um, indestructible. Indestructible. They're on these boats. There's nothing that will I do them I can't imagine down. a Sky News anchor or a Guardian columnist surviving at sea for as long <laughs> as these oh, people... I can't imagine them surviving, getting in the damn, you know, <laughs> dinghy. <laughs> oh, my God, it's very chilly. I've got a wetsuit. Um, so they get in. So my kind of, when you're at school, the thing you learn is that cockroaches are the only thing that will survive the nuclear, the nuclear holocaust. holocaust. Right? Yeah. We all know yeah, that. So you've it's, just it's, gone for it yourself. Whether it's, it's true or not. It's a, it's a metaphor. It's a, a metaphor. Yes, it's a metaphor. And maybe, whether it's true or not, one day we'll, we'll never know, will we? Because we won't survive and those bloody things will. We don't know if the Muslims will. So, correct. And my, but my kind of analogy was, these guys, they are enduring. They are like cockroaches. Now, this word, cockroach, mm -hmm. became the most contentious word ever used in a national newspaper. Let's bear in mind that has to get through a backbench. Many which layers people checking, of yeah, legal, legal and editing and, and, editor. Like and then so uh, as a result. And the problem presumably was that you were comparing them to parasites, to insects, oh, no, to I was swarming. Using it in the, whatever. Well, I was using it in the context of they are enduring. But, what but you're a writer, you're is, aware of the other connotations mm, that come with you it. You layer my, on. My, my point is it shouldn't fucking matter. It shouldn't matter. And if you, you should be able to say whatever the hell you Rwandan want. Rwandan genocide, that's your issue. I didn't layer that on, you layered yeah, that yeah, on. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, it wasn't in my head. It's a, it's <laughs> it a, wasn't, but it is now. Very, no, very, <laughs> very often when someone will, will criticise or complain about something I've said, they'll come up with a much more offensive interpretation than the one I that originally was precisely intended. What I and about I, feel this. I feel offended <laughs> I do. and I feel hurt that I didn't come up with it. You know I, was like, <laughs> I was like, Rwanda genocide? Oh, what an idea. If only if I'd, only I'd got there <laughs> first. <laughs> if only my joke <laughs> in my history if was better. If only I had as dark a mind as you. You. It's like that, I got, uh, yeah, it's uh, UC so Berkeley, oh, yes. when, they, when they wanted to cancel my talk the first time around, a UC Berkeley college professor, and this is a related, not quite the same thing, but university college professor said, oh, he's planning to out undocumented documented students and I wasn't but what an idea <laughs> <laughs> they're, well done they're good idea they're here illegally <laughs> they shouldn't be here do you love that word undocumented as well undocumented Isn't that just like, undocumented and, and 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 they're not they shouldn't be here they have no right to be here um why shouldn't I be able to do so? I'm undocumented. No, sorry, you're illegal. Yeah. You're, like, I'm fat, I'm plus size. No, sorry, no, you're fat. No, not, not plus Let's size. Let's strip back these words. So anyway, I ended up uh, in a uh, cell with two police officers. You in a cell? Yeah, with a, with a tape recorder. So it's back in the old days where you had to press to play and play record. and record at the same time. <laughs> they were like time. that, and I was like, oh, have I just gone back to Dickensian a, England? You've gone to the British police. <laughs> yeah, so they so were the like, answer is conk. yes. They, they, yeah. they know, they're only a few years ahead of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> you know, like. So they were there in the cell with their two police officers, and Half I had to go in. don't know what a cassette tape is. No, but, so but this, this old it. way of kind of recording, <laughs> isn't it? That's all you can say. People used to walk around with them on their hips. I wouldn't know. I barely remember myself. That is correct. But I'm so old and haggard I can. <laughs> so these two police officers and I had to do an interview under caution with the Metropolitan Police. So that's like NYPD plus for us, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Major Crime and Homicide Command. 
That was so the major people, crime and homicide. Come on, so people that do mass murderers. And you were in there with the mass murder detectives. Yes, because you had used I wrote the, the word, word cockroach in a column that had gone through legal editors. Did that, a, did a, that a, an established national newspaper had yes, published. Yes, yes, and then and you were hauled in. <laughs> and after oh, my interview I'm so with him, which I kind I of hate enjoyed. You. I hate you. I know. I'm gonna stab you in and the throat. And I had a four-page speech, oh. which I got to read, which I was like, God. it was very, very exciting for me. And the barrister that I went in with, who's uh, frightfully, he, he appears like he's really down with the people, so people underestimate him. He's very mm -hmm. wily. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, he said it's I've the first like time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said it's the first time he's seen two police officers look more frightened than the person that they were <laughs> I really like my moment. Did you dress like this? Yes, and I milked it. <laughs> I milked that moment. I'm here, here I to am. stand for free <laughs> speech. <laughs> I had a full Maggie Thatcher moment post IRA. I went, I went big. <laughs> I loved it. If I could have had cameras in that fucking police oh, station, I would have. God, so I did can, that. I, can I buy the movie rights to this? <laughs> because I so, just, when, you, when, when eventually they, they slam you into prison, when you're, when you're in the clink, oh, I want yeah, the movie in. rights to the free speech martyr I'm of Britain. I'm going in. Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to service every male I can. Yeah, but, so, it, so after that... Do you understand says, how popular you'd be in prison? No, I don't mean... <laughs> that. Do you mean sexually? No. Sexually. Well, possibly, but... I think but, I'd be sexually fabulous. <laughs> possibly, but... I would earn my keep. <laughs> I'd be on my knees I just mean, more I often think than you, my aged grand. Well, I used, to, I used to have the same thing, but I wanted to go to prison in the US. <laughs> it was always my dream to fuck someone on death row. <laughs> Because it's so what, like hot. A last, it's like a, so hot. Is that hot? Oh, oh yeah. I just well, want someone to Chris Brown me, you know? Is that, That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> Why is it hot to do someone wanted. to Chris on, on, well, Brown? Because they murdered someone with Definitely. their own hands. Oh, a murderer. It's so hot. Is that hot? Is it hot that they're dying as well? Oh, no, uh, that's not so hot. Yeah, it is because you're the last person that'll ever get it. Yeah. And, you know, the last time they had their hands on someone's throat, that person ended up dead. But then that might be you. They'd be like that spider yeah, that's that eats what's exciting. That's what's exciting about it. It's, it's, you it, know, the no. female spider. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> that's, that's what's exciting. <laughs> that's anywho, it. anywho. So back to the police station. Yes. And then, so we had my fabulousness speech that I, yes, I was um, laughing with yes, the sequence. Yep. And then they said, well. <laughs> did you actually wear sequence? I did. They said, <laughs> yes, and my tranny heels. I went full, I went full out. <laughs> and then they said, well, we will have to refer you to the Crown Prosecution Service. So as in, whatever you said here matters not because we're referring you anyway, because the people that made the complaint were the Society for Black Lawyers. And we can't be seen to be not uh, hearing them seriously. And this is an example of not just the, the terrible attitudes to, to free speech, the lack of a First Amendment in the UK, but also the first bubbling up of identity politics, mm. that side yes. of the pond. Yes. It's a, you know, it, it's a parallel justice system yes. for people who are able to describe themselves as victims of something. Of something. And this was a few years ago, you know, so, but the fact that there is a society for black lawyers... Because people think of identity politics powerful. as American, but no, it, it, it isn't it's really. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And same with, like, if you're from the Muslim Council of Britain, you have a, an ability to lobby in a way that other people can't to lobby. To command press, got, to all the rest go, of the police are terrified of being... Yep. So yep. that happens. But then also, I guess, my Twitter feed, you know, the hate police, online policing of my Twitter feed is hilarious. So <laughs> I wrote... Do you get warnings from the verified uh, police services? Because, you know, like Glasgow police will tweet <laughs> yes, about, don't hilarious. be offensive on the Internet because we're watching. Well, they're uh, one of the ones, actually. It's the Scottish. So there was yeah. a Scottish nurse. And uh -huh. she went over because she was so, you know, saving the planet. Saving the planet. Every right. moment she was awake, she was saving and the planet. Spiky-haired Caledonian lesbian activist. It's absolutely, <laughs> definitely a lesbian, but in a very bitter way. Sort of they vaginally all? secreting are there, are sulfuric there, acid. Are there unbitter lesbians? Well, she was particularly bitter. She went over to cure the world of Ebola because <laughs> so she was bitter, so noble. So bitter you could almost smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Herrings. And she came back to the UK and she was carrying a bit of Ebola. Because a bit was, of a boner? Yeah. No, not a bit of a boner, a bit of Ebola. Oh, Ebola. And, that, and that's quite different. <laughs> Both liquefy your insides. We can, we can do the, uh, <laughs> could do the biology on that. I missed that one. No, I didn't miss it. It just was a bit shit. But, okay. But Ebola and boner, moving along. She was coming back. She Both mess it. up your insides. Is that better? <laughs> She's a lesbian. She's kind of a boner. <laughs> She came back and she was carrying a bit of Ebola. Yes, the 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 the, the, the in the the liquid liquefying. Yes, the thing. one that liquefies yeah. you from the yeah. inside. We yes. were at customs actually, just going into Australia. My daughter, who's very like me, Poppy. Yeah. Someone sneezed. It was a black guy three rows along in yeah. the customs. He sneezed and Poppy went Ebola. <laughs> I was like, Poppy, will you shut up? Anyway, back to the story. Back to the story. God. 
Ebola. She's she gonna came have back. such a terrible I know. life. No, she's fabulous. And uh, about you? <laughs> and I'm hoping also my son's gay. We'll talk about that later. Don't. No. 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 Oh, okay. Well, I'm, no. I'm taking notes of that. Don't I'll wish your back. son is gay. I do wish. Don't. Let's, no. let's go back to Ebola nurse. Back to Ebola nurse. I liked you so much before you said that. Okay. Fine. I, I don't need your love. I do. I know, uh, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, it's okay. I don't mean that. Uh, so she came back to the UK, she's feeling a bit hot and sweaty, realised mm. she had a temperature of 455 and was carrying Ebola, but thought, no, I'll mm -hmm. carry along so I'd quite like to get home. Yeah, yeah, just, just <laughs> nice keep, girl. keep going. Yeah, so she yeah. brought Ebola back to the UK. Yes. I called her an Ebola bomb. And perfectly Scottish reasonable. On Twitter, and perfectly I was like, reasonable. If any more sweaty jocks or socks, whatever I called them, want to be an Ebola <laughs> bomb, 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 please do stay in the African country to whence you went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I was in Australia for travel. Uh, the police rang in the middle of the night and said, yeah. We are going to repatriate you to the UK for this tweet. They brought you home from <laughs> Australia <laughs> because yeah. you tweeted about someone else's bomb. wrongdoing. Yeah, because she came back with Ebola and she didn't get the temperature measured. Do you think that they were most upset about that or do you think they were upset about sweaty jocks? They didn't like sweaty jocks. I think so. Is it socks or so jocks? I, I muddled the two and one of them is racist. Is no, sweaty none socks or jocks racist? Well, sweaty jocks refers to Scottish the, people. Right, and I think I might have called them sweaty socks, and that was racist. No, it's not racist. There was a definite so or is issue, <laughs> and they rang me in the middle of the night. Did you, well, maybe you meant to say sweaty jocks. I did. Jocks being jock straps, but also them, Scottish people, yes, but you and said sweaty, sweaty socks. socks. which became racist. Why? And they felt it was racist. Why? And Because 15 different Scottish police forces had received reports <laughs> that it was offensive. <laughs> <laughs> because the definition of racism so now is that someone somewhere said it would hurt my feelings. So one in the morning <laughs> in Australia, because obviously a 12 hours difference, I had a phone call saying we're repatriating you because you called us sweaty socks. I was like, hold on, hold on, I've got, got to get my head around this. Let me wake up a little bit. No, it's still not making sense. No, it's like that. No, I've been up for an hour. <laughs> yeah. I've had a coffee and a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> and I still can't get my and, and I still I'm can't sti make No, it's still fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like any which way. I'll try and rationally think about it. I'll write a note to myself. Does Thinking it make about sense it, now? No, it's, no, still, it's still, still stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so the, that. What, what upsets me the most about this, and it's the reason I don't go home very often because I think I'm illegal in my Where's own home? home country. Where's home? Um, well, London now, but I grew up in Kent, of course. Um, is, home, is home there still? No. Well, I, I don't have Home's a home here. there anymore. Home is in Miami now. But yes. I mean, I don't go to England very much no, anymore I because know. I feel like I'd be illegal there. I mean, there's some of the stuff I've said about the religion of peace. Um, I would be in jail. <laughs> Want I would be in jail, no, but I would be in jail. Um, <laughs> or I might tour there next year. But the thing that annoys me most about um, the way that you're treated is um, that most of what you say, if not everything that you say, is true. Mm. I mean, you say it in, a, in, a, in a, an amusing and provocative way, but there's a tweet you sent. Um, <laughs> you, uh -oh. No, no. <laughs> when people, this is the they, moment of <laughs> the When they refer to their notes. I know, with glasses yeah, like you, this. You, <laughs> Okay, go I'm on. I'm looking go over on. my spectacles at you, brandishing my notes. You are, it's quite so hot. This is, a, this is a Channel 4 moment, isn't it? So, Kathy Newman. <laughs> oh, Kathy Newman, yeah. she's the worst. So, you sent a tweet. <laughs> Did I, like Kathy? That's the, no. Have you ever had sex, oh. Kathy? Yeah, no. Yeah. Where did you get that perm, Kathy? That's what I want to ask her. I want to ask her. What, what's with the hair? Where's the interdimensional portal that you're using to take you to some hideous hell dimension where you can get a perm like that yeah, still who in does 2017? Kathy Newman and also, if you've got exceptionally small boobs, I should know, you don't wear tops that show them <laughs> off, Kathy Newman. <laughs> Like, how did she get on Channel Nobody 1 News? who she is. Well, crap hair. Right, okay, mm. paint yourselves a picture. Imagine, crap hair, imagine, small tits, you know annoying. She She's Debbie Wasserman Schultz on TV. Right, right, right. So That's that woman. She is. Yeah. Apparently, this is a woman who should she host the evening news. She needs your stylist, darling. Everybody needs my stylist. Apparently, he read with me. He held me down on the bed. He then orally forced himself on me. Harvey walked in. Took his pants down, exited on the floor. Actor Kevin Spacey sexually assaulted my son. Louis C.K. approached her when she was working on a TV pilot. He said, can I masturbate in front of you? Stuck his hand inside so my Vester son's Stallone pants. Sylvester Stallone is facing some serious allegations Six that he sexually assaulted a teenager. Accusing Brett Ratner of he sexual harassment. My car. And Kevin Spacey you know, is facing 20 cry. new allegations. My name is Milo Yiannopoulos. I'm a New York Times best-selling author and an award-winning journalist. I'm also a victim of child sexual abuse, and in the 2000s, I lived in Beverly Hills, where I saw things that made me want to move out of Hollywood really very quickly. 
In my new book, Despicable, I'm not just lifting the lid on what I saw, but I'm also telling the stories of friends of mine who work in the entertainment and music business. People who don't want to go to the mainstream media or to left-wing journalists because they felt so consistently vilified and ostracized for their political views. These people are ready to name names. In Despicable, I explain how Hollywood and the Democrat Party exist in intricate symbiosis, keeping each other protected and powerful. But I also explain how Hollywood's recent string of commercial failures and creative disasters stem from the same cancerous center as its hypocrisy and finger-wagging. The collapse in Hollywood's moral foundation has led us to a place that tells the rest of us how to live while turning a blind eye to the most appalling abuses on its own doorstep. Whether this ossified and self-regarding industry can find a way out of the crisis it created depends on whether Hollywood can discover an appreciation for the only kind of diversity that actually matters. Diversity of thought and opinion. Despicable will be published next year, but you can pre-order signed first editions at Dangerous.com today. So this tweet, <laughs> um, you said... Oh, this is so... Pri this, is, this is quite hot, actually. What? You like it? Mastery. Well, no, it's back, my... Back to school days. No, it's, my, it's my cerebral look, I like it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, explosion in France, shooting at a German hospital, mm. knife attack in London. Oh. And Ramadan has not yet begun. <laughs> Without one. food, these sods get nasty. <laughs> now, it's not even particularly offensive. That one, that one in a lot But it's also absolutely true. So true. I mean, Ramadan rage is a well-understood, well-known... Um, I mean, they don't call it Ramadan rage, of course we do, but it's a well rage. rage. It's a well, that's what I call it. Ramadan rage. Ramadan rage. It's a well-known phenomenon in the of Middle course. East. The Saudi police deploy triple the or quadruple. I can't remember even what the number is. Vast uh, numbers of police. Action. Vast numbers of police during the holy month of, of Ramadan, <laughs> as we're obliged to call it on television. Is it holy month of Ramadan? Holy month of Ramadan. Just people that don't eat very much, but still incredibly fat. Yeah. No. Explain that. <laughs> How that does that? Ramadan ends There's and they're all fatter than they started. Well, because it puts your body into starvation mode. No, it's not. It's because they gorge like bloody bats. No, they do the every, time. <laughs> every, every time the sun goes down, it starts with If the with Ramadan dates. plan was a diet, it, it would be bloody bankrupt. And it ends with McDonald's. Yeah, 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing? Um, Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> they eat more than any other time. What are you drinking? Oh, this, oil. Oh. <laughs> it's Ramadan. I've got to drink oil. It's 2 a.m. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, darling, have a diet. No, no. Any, Just anyway. because you wear a burqa doesn't mean you can be fat. Any word. Back. Yes, go. I like that. That's good. Yeah, remember any, that one. Although the next thing. Do people any, have fat eyeballs? Can what? you tell fat people by their eyeballs? Well, you could probably tell from here. Can you tell? I don't know. Do I look any, slim? You don't look any slimmer or fatter. <laughs> <laughs> Back to topic. <laughs> and back we go. All right. Um, hmm. Before the midnight oh, yes, feast. Ramadan. Before <laughs> the midnight... <laughs> What are you doing? Ram it up. <laughs> Why are you so knackered, Marura Shaka? Oh, because I've been up all night shoving something shit in my face. <laughs> I had six pints of Ben and Jerry's because <laughs> I, the I can't eat for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just I inhaled a multi pack of. <laughs> Chicken. I've inhaled a multi pack of bunions. <laughs> Chicken fillet? Yes, because I'm not allowed to eat for a few hours during the yes. day while the sun's up. No, no. At a time I can't even drink water. No. I'm such a dedicated <sighs> soldier for Allah. No, no. no. <laughs> yes. Anyway. During the hours <laughs> of non eating, of not eating, <laughs> which is which are few. Well, we know we know about hangriness as 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 <laughs> attractive thin people. We have we have gone through our fair share of being hangry. Mm. You know, you want to get into a particular dress for a particular awards show, whatever. Um, you can have experiences of being hangry because you're in whatever. <laughs> yeah. So let's say hungry and angry. Four or five p.m. You're, co you're, you're, you're coming. Angry. You're coming off your last night's binge. <laughs> sugar, <laughs> sugar, drinking oil, <laughs> sugar crash. <laughs> what have you been eating? Oh, I could just deep hear. The, I could hear the producers. Um, the, the 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 sugar crash is is setting in. <laughs> your carb crash, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Four or five p.m. I just confirmed our fat work. You get. Really, <laughs> <laughs> you get I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm just getting, yep, yep, yep we're done. We're yeah. done. We're all, oh, you're number one on the list, though I'm number two, so you're Before, going first. I, I don't know about any other positions. Satwa <laughs> fucking tastic. Oh, God. People get stroppy, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, <laughs> when they haven't had lunch, people get stroppy. 
and, and it is well known in the Middle East. And even, uh, you may not know this, even in Manchester, down in, it's, I think, it's, is it Didsbury? Um, where, the, where the big mosque is in Manchester? Don't go there. No, I've no never been there. But. Don't go to the dark side. D <laughs> well, except in bed. It, yes. Um, in Manchester, the police triple their patrols because they know that this is a time when shops get raided, yeah. crime it happens, and all the rest of it. So you were alluding to something absolutely yes. true. Statistically, Completely there's a true. correlation between and, violent acts and, and Ramadan. By your usual standards, this tweet isn't particularly offensive. Oh, no. I mean, it's not even, it's nowhere near cockroach tear. It's not. No, I mean, I'll just read it again. All sweaty again. socks. Explosion of sweaty socks. Well, I, I'm all, I'm all, we may have to edit out sweaty socks for our delicate American listeners. I think we may. But, but we don't explosion in France, shooting at a German hospital, knife attack in this London. Just one day could not be more dispassionate language. And Ramadan has not yet begun. Without food, these sods get nasty. Well, these sods, you could have been referring to, you were referring to anyone. But the point is, by your standards, this wasn't even that offensive. No, but and I don't it think went it was crazy. This is something you could hear in any pub, any bar, any night of the week, mm. anywhere in Britain. But that had police officers at my door of my house telling me I needed to come in for interviews under question. Did you, interview, have under you ever taken any of this stuff down? Have you been forced to take it down? No, 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 I didn't delete it. You've always let this stuff I've up. I've left it up. How, yeah. and how has Twitter not nuked down. you yet? So this is the curious Because thing. in America, they're taking us out because yeah. they're looking at the politically well, when you effective... Went, was, uh, that was a bad day for me. Well, was it, was, it was the beginning of the we end. We missed you on I Twitter. Know, I, know, I know, I know. Yeah, we do. It was the beginning of the end. And now Roger Stone and a bunch of others and the gone. press is trying to paint it like Twitter's crackdown on white supremacy. Mm. <laughs> it isn't. It's effective conservatives. It's of conservatives course. that actually could persuade and change people's minds. But it is a crazy thing that I'm still there. I it don't is, understand. Uh, Maybe no. because you're British and that you're, they're, the police, they're coming for you. They are coming for you. I don't. I think it might be because I go with it in their faces. So I've gone to I go, you know, dear Jack. Yeah. Please do take my blue tip because, frankly, I don't want it anymore, honey bun. It's quite but brazen. It all, it it's quite brazen. To Maybe make that them want to leave it on. Oh, that's a good strategy. Either way, I got. I should, yeah, have, I should have thought of that last police, year. Police, uh, police at my door for that tweet. Right. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. And now, one thing I've noticed is that the the primary offenders, um, uh, the, the primary. Um, uh, antagonists against free speech. Mm. In Europe, it's the government um, because we the, because we don't uh, in our in our native land we don't have a First Amendment. There's no constitutional protection for your right to express yourself to, to say, do, and be whatever you no. want. Um, in France, it's even worse because it's sort of a, this this is this is historic actually. Um, the uh, and, and it's a European I instinct. Is that if it exists, there should be rules about it. Mm. If it exists, we should be telling you how it works how many of them you're allowed to buy, and what language you're allowed to use about it. This is a distinctively French yeah. approach to the law and yes. to language. Yeah. A very prescriptivist kind of way to live. Now, in, in Britain, we have a, a better, somewhat better history. The default is freedom, but then there are lots of rules laid on top for safety and public order. Yeah. And in many cases, etiquette and politeness, yes. which in my view should not exist at all, <laughs> because they create the absurdity, and this is the problem, of laws that can be enforced on somebody's entirely subjective and completely unfalsifiable internal say-so. Mm. In other words, you can tweet something and somebody can say, she hurt my feelings, and you have to waste your time at the police station. Yes, and the new... That's amazing. They've kind of redefined it recently in terms of what is offence on Twitter, right. and they've made it perceived. So that word perceived came in by the so Crown Prosecution. I don't sentence. even have to be offended. I just You can perceive per offence, or even better than that, the next level is you can perceive that I've been offended and report it as hate police. And then there are See, entire I, units now I'm glad you of police that are dedicated to hate online. So rather I'm than patrol the nasty streets, I, I've got a hunch. they can sit in the warm. I've got a hunch that very few of the people who complain about your tweets mm. about Muslims or immigration mm. are Muslim or immigrants. I think it's, I think it's white liberals stirring up trouble. Yes, of and course, the reason, and they're campaigning to get me silenced in the same way that you know. And, and, and I think the problem is that this kind of open-ended invitation to abuse actually just opens the, you know, this is this is thrown open the door to um, well-organized, well-funded political well -funded. activism yeah. uh, designed to abuse badly written law that rests on subjective interpretations and feelings. And feelings-based yes. legislation is a total disaster. And this last thing is all feelings. Total Perceived disaster. makes it all about your feelings. If you feel or you perceive that you should she have, you She offended me it. is enough to haul somebody. I mean, you've not been convicted of anything, right? No, no. 
but you've had to go through how many how, how many encounters with the police? Four direct encounters in stations. Of course, and then they're tipping off the uh, the journalists before you get there. The police are oh, so in cohorts the, yeah, with them. So yeah, yeah. that's mass but reporting. That's, that's quite fun. That's super fun. And yeah, no, so you don't mind that at all. Don't, pre don't pretend that's a problem. Police in my house. Because we all know that it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had police in my house, uh, and they spit up, fit up these uh, intruder alerts because I've, mm. I was threatened with decapitation earlier this year. So they've just gone down now. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all I'm my favorite, Pamela, Pamela all, Galilee. All my favorite people are at risk of, uh, uh, of assassination or decapitation. Yeah, but it is always true. Because I made see. a mistake of going after feminists first instead of, <laughs> instead of uh, instead of Muslims. So the worst that can happen to me is they'll just throw a bag of cat piss at me. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what's the worst feminists can do to they can someone? They suffocate me with a cardigan. Or they or come, <laughs> at, come at me with, a, try with kiss some you. knitting oh, yeah. needles. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll lurch at me with some knitting needles. Or but, worse, worse than any of those things, far worse than death, they will put me on a saga cruise. <laughs> <laughs> They'll put me on a cruise. Was it Jane Mansfield? I'm <laughs> singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll put me on a saga cruise with, with late night cabaret entertainment. Late night in the cruise world being 6 p.m. after dinner. After <laughs> The pussy, the pussy marches were one of the best days that's on this planet, weren't they? The pussy marches. My vagina is made of steel. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. It this really puts isn't. me in mind of what will happen when we get, when we inevitably end inevitably. up in hell. Yes. But I believe in personal hell. I don't know how a Catholic that is, really. But that for me, hell is an eternal game of Scrabble with, with some, with <laughs> some stinking crew. crypto dyke <laughs> who's really good at triple word scores. Yes. Stinking crypto dyke. It's a great thing. I thought, so the other person that comes to get me quite often is Ofcom, which is like the yeah, regulator yeah. for kind of, if you're on radio, you're broadcast, yes, Ofcom can come and the get you. they have the ability to sanction the station that you're... The radio station that, that you present for. you're broadcasting for or your newspaper. So after the pussy marches, and I'd stood amongst them with, after the Trump was inaugurated, and they'd come to march because actually they'd booked their train fares and their plane fares because they were going to come and see Clinton be. Oh. And then so they thought, well, let's not waste the let's tickets. Let's not waste the tickets. Let's pussy let's march anyway. We can, we can only afford one ticket here <laughs> to know. London. Since we're left wing, we this don't is have there. jobs. This is, this this is, is this. Washington. We've got permission. We've got, we've got permission. <laughs> so they had these posters, right? My pussy is made, my vagina is made of steel. So I went on the radio and I said, okay, your vagina is made of steel. Well, my vagina can fit a 24 ounce can of cores sideways, right? Because yes. I was like, you know, I've had babies. I'm like a real woman. My vagina is massive. It's got its own echo. Like many yeah, men have lost themselves up can, there. We can move You on. like the detail. Well, I, you like my vaginal detail. detail. I know that you do. No. But you're just you're pretending to be gay. I know that you find it hard. <laughs> so, oh my God. Anywho, Ofcom took that down right, word for word. Yeah. And then my small white middle-aged manager sat opposite me saying we've got an <laughs> Ofcom complaint out. and I will now read you the transcript. <laughs> My vagina can fit a 24 ounce can of cores. She's like this. <laughs> Sideways. But he didn't get the, you know, punctuation. No, no, no. He didn't, so I was like, he corrected didn't him on the punctuation, the at which point I was told I was not funny <laughs> and the punctuation was not important. <laughs> There's an Ofcom warning about my vagina, which is sort of one of my best days in radio, to be honest. You see, this is this is alien to Americans mm. because they're used to being um, uh, used to having their sort of a chilling effect, an intimidatory sort of effect from left wing <laughs> media saying, "Oh, this person is low rent yes. and crass, yes. not worthy of airtime." This yes. is what I get on college campuses. You know, yes. this isn't the sort of person that should be speaking to no, students. No, no, we need somebody. Oh, yes, more yeah, deserving. To, right? No, to which, which my response is: These kids pay <laughs> sixty grand to be indoctrinated in Marxism. I think they can pick for themselves <laughs> you know, because you're not teaching. And they them. want you there. And they, they want, want me you there. there. They want me they there. Want, this is the um, frustration. They want you there. But this is this is sort of me. I mean. I keep coming back to this as sort of yes, the, the focus, British thing is the that there focus is law behind of this. the interview yes. really is this astonishing the establishment thing. behind this the, the 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 law the police that come to my door Ofcom and the regulatory bodies that come to my door everybody threatening to lock me up for <laughs> sweaty socks or Ebola's or steel vaginas or cockroaches or, or ha the hungry other thing. hangry ramadams hangry <laughs> ramadam ding dong <sighs> yeah I know funny it's, days it's horrible. It's sort of horrible, it's but why sort I left. Of, is it sort of also it, glorious, it, perhaps? 
you know, in the in the age where it, you still do have a voice, like there is a little bit of me that, mm -hmm. as much as I, I lament your your loss, um, that Twitter not taking me down yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like inside Twitter there's a Milo. There must, no, be, a, there must be a Katie you. Hopkins fan. There's someone there must in there. Be a Katie there is. Fan somewhere there on Twitter. is. Which means there may be a fabulous version of you also inside of Twitter, oh, but we don't know them yet. Maybe, maybe. Like James Damore, but James Damore and Google. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe so there's some sort of a human version of James. He's adorable. He's adorable he's, in a cute little pocket monster way. He's he's he. You need a translator for life. It's not his natural thing to speak in public. Are they all like that? I think so. Google engineers. I think so, yes. How do they get on? How do they ever get a bus? Let's talk about... I don't think you catch those buses. Don't know. I don't know anybody do who teleport? does. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, I, want to, I want to talk to you about the changing face of London, briefly. Now, um, lots of right-wing commentators in this country like to um, write fairly hysterical pieces about this. Yeah. Gavin McInnes, mutual friend of ours, went over there recently, and he said, yeah, see the big deal. I mean, they were not really that bad. I, on the other hand, on my last visit, went to Whitechapel and Knightsbridge. Whitechapel, because that's where, mm -hmm. um, roughly where I used to live. Knightsbridge, of course, for shopping. <laughs> and in <laughs> both, because that's where I go. <laughs> both, both areas, of course, are the you know the zenith, the apex of of Burkadom, of Londonistan. Yeah. Um, you actually do spend more mm. time in London mm. and have done for, for years. About four days a week. Yeah, what's your impression of the changing face of the city, if there is one? Yeah. Is, is it all a bit overblown? No. Because I don't go back very often anymore, so I'm, I'm always asking people, is it just, you know, is it, is it like Tehran now? Yes. Because I'm, you know, so I, I, I'm so like, you know, I don't want to go, I don't, I don't no. go to France anymore because I'm, I'm worried about yeah, that I can't make Paris. myself understood because I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> um, but but, but is, is London this yes. bad yet? You're not Somali, the no, Eritreans not, will get you. No, I'm not Somalian and I don't speak Arabic, so <laughs> how can the I The Afghans go? will hate There's you. No point going to I Paris. I just cannot fit into Paris because I'm not <laughs> Afghani. Because I'm not Afghani or Somali. I'm going to dress Eritrean and I will fit right in. <laughs> so London, is it as bad as I say? Yes, it is. And people say, you know, how dare that woman go on American TV and talk yeah. us down. Yeah. You know, she doesn't love her country. I bloody love my country. Well, that's obvious. Yeah, that's obvious. Yeah. I hate it when people say that. Oh, it's like, you know, those because you can heart. be outspoken in defense of your country, whether it's Trump or Boris or you or yes. me or any of these figures, it's clear the one thing you cannot be accused of, and you can be accused of many things. Many things, darling. The one thing you cannot be accused of is a lack of patriotism. No, of course. I, I love my country. You're the most British person I've ever met. <laughs> I mean, Am I? Yeah, you are. Hurrah! <laughs> uh, so See? You know, no, 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 nobody yeah, does fallen, that. Has fallen. Yeah. It has. And I really believe, having been there, you know, right there, just after the Westminster Bridge attack, where, you know, a Muslim in a truck just tore down people on those pavements. And then London Bridge, where uh, guys with hunting knives went into restaurants where girls mm -hmm. and women were eating and just stabbed them in the head. You know, it, it, that place is falling. When I hear a moped now, and, it, and the reason I say it is because the Triggers fear um, now, it, it's, it's you feel it. So when I hear a moped now mm -hmm. in certain parts of London, I will move into the inside of the curb and spot the moped because acid attacks come off the back of mopeds. People just chuck the acid. Mm -hmm. And when I cross roads, if I have my children up in town, mm -hmm. um, we cross the road and I tell them, to, let's just say there's a lamppost. What's an American translation for lamppost? The street Lamp, light, street light, yeah. street light. If there's a street light, I tell my children I, to stand next to the street light when we cross the road mm -hmm. so that they're next to the metal. And that's a weird conversation to have with 12 and 11 year olds in a capital city. Who've grown up in the, in the British countryside yes. where this doesn't even occur to them. Yes, and I'm They've just never had to think I'm about this stuff. Like, I'm just tooling them up so that if a truck up, is going to smash into Teddy bears, you, the Queen, Buckingham Palace, then yes. when they actually encounter, they confront the reality of living in London. Yes, you have and to I'm warn them to about these horrendous things. I'm not scaring things. them, because I'm, I'm, I'm not well, saying a truck might life. smash into you. I'm saying, if you're crossing the road, stand next to the metal street lamp, mm -hmm. so that if a truck, and I don't add this bit, but if a truck smashes into my kids, it will hit the metal lamp post first. And, that's and I think that's the only good thing it. about Islam, wasn't it? No female drivers, and now the Saudis have <laughs> fucked that up too. <laughs> so I do think it's genuinely scary. And when you look at the stats, so we're now the rape capital, we have more rapes in New, uh, London than we do in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, as Acid attacks. We have more acid attacks in East London than mm -hmm. in Islamabad. You know, things have got pretty dark, and mm -hmm. I blame that absolutely fairly and squarely on the shoulders, small shoulders that they are, of our pocket-sized Muslim mayor Sadiq Khan. He's right. repulsive. Right. He's and I noticed that I noticed that um, Sadiq Khan. Um, who is perfectly happy to speak to segregated crowds and all the oh, rest of it when he visits that. Muslim areas. Has Hamas has been uh, through London. beautifying the city oh. uh, recently with concrete blocks and bollards. I mean, the place looks like it is 
permanently on high alert. Yeah. Because it is. Because it is. And because our, it the, is. The walls we have on our bridges now, you know, they're I've seen the picture. I mean, I haven't seen them in person. It's because odd. Been, I haven't been back for a it's while. Because, ugh, something you but. said today in your, so you did a talk today, mm -hmm. something you said. So there was a picture of Sadiq Kant uh, the other day, and he said, this feminist mm -hmm. in City Hall, you had an expression today about male feminists. You oh, like when, you, when, so, when a man describes himself as a male feminist, you can start the clock on the rape charge. Yes, right. It's absolutely that true. 100% true. <laughs> Look at Hollywood. Look at liberal journalists. All of these preening, virtue signaling, finger wagging. I am a male cunts. feminist. Oh, no, excuse me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a feminist ally. They don't yes. really, they don't even say male feminist. No. They say, I'm a feminist ally. Yes. Um, oh, and, and, and surprise, surprise, no one saw this coming. Actually, aggressive public displays of virtue are where the morally deplorable hide. And right. every single one of them ends up being a, a diddler or a rapist <laughs> or, a, or a, you know, just so, or one of these. What, no sex, by the way, in these left-wing sex scandals. It's all just fiddling with yourself, you know? And, 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 you make it look very small and, and when potted, you do that. It's all, it's that all, was a very small no, it's penis. All, it's all auto-diddling and potted plants. <laughs> <laughs> Auto diddling and potted fat. No, this is what liberal sex scandals boil down to. At least if it was a Republican, it'd be a proper rape. But it, 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 <laughs> no one. Then you, then you would know, and you'd be like, "This is a God. bastard." Give him the electric chair for doing that to a woman. But the but the liberal stuff. This you know, it's, it's over this. Like, <laughs> oh, God, this is not a good. A little bit of sand comes out, you know. Like it just, and then, and then the abuse, the uh, the uh, the abuse of the flora. <laughs> Hotel lobby palm trees. <laughs> Auto diddling. And, and, and this, uh, the, you know, the, the poor, the poor restaurant bonsai. <laughs> yeah. You know, it takes a shafting. It takes well, not even just just a light drizzling. <laughs> <laughs> so just a, a light drashing. The light just just a drizzle. You know, a just a few. Just a mere froth. A bit of light spotting. <laughs> 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 because Harvey Weinstein took a liking to a waitress. <laughs> a oh. bisque. A mere bisque. A, le <laughs> a lobster bisque, en passant. Speaking of lobster, by the way. Yes, darling. My favourite. <laughs> that was a segue we, we never expected. We never expected. You couldn't write that. But it's great. <laughs> Speaking about welfare, lobster welfare dependency and With lobsters, auto diddling wanking. My favourite story from the US of the last month is the woman who's <laughs> buying her dog lobster tails with her food stamps. What, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> no, no, it's bah, like, bah, bah. what would you call it? In what's England? she doing? What is food? Utter bastard. What's food? What's oh no, not the lady. What are food stamps? Food stamps. Called? Oh, like welfare, like uh, free, like food free banks. We have yeah. free, like we get it's welfare It's not food checks. banks. It's the government stuff. It's it's your it's your it's your weekly welfare, whatever. And she's, so okay, so for America, us, it's universal food, credit. Universal yeah. credit. In, in America, you get food, uh, food stamps, so you, you get like uh, EBT or whatever, and you can only spend it in certain places. Which like, is better, you see. In food shop, in food stores, and on cosmetics and stuff like that. She's spending it on lobster. On lobster tails for her dog. Yeah. No, absolutely. I love. I love her. I think she's great. I sort um, of am drawn to her too. <laughs> I, you know, it's, there's a sort of, whenever you open a copy of the Daily Mail, which mm -hmm. is, I suppose, the closest thing we have over here is maybe the Inquirer, but 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 not really. Not really. Um, maybe the New York Post. Yeah. Uh, you open a copy of the Daily Mail every couple of days, and there's, there's this woman who is sort of <laughs> brazenly <laughs> yes. staring down the camera yes. with her 18, 18 <laughs> state-funded children. You can't her, go wrong. Her red-eyed brood. Well, it's actually, you know, it's just, it's, and there's no dad in the picture. It's, no, it's just no. her you, and her vast <laughs> ugly, and her benefits mansion. Uh, but no, no. No, they're all, no, they're always huge, <laughs> and they're having sex with whoever they can as a self-esteem device, and they're collecting these, and they're, and, and and by and large, normally, they're in the paper with eighteen <laughs> fatherless children in their gigantic mansion on the outskirts of some terrible northern that we've town. Paid for. Compla that everyone else paid for, complaining about a benefits cap and saying that because they only get 2000 a month, they can no longer feed their children. <laughs> it's basically, if it's a slow news day and everyone's in conference and everyone's like, mm, can we do one of those, no story of those oh, poor benefit person. freak show stories? <laughs> That there's nothing on today. I know we've got nothing. I know the paper's bare. Okay, what about that benefits. woman in Wolfenstone? Yeah. <laughs> and then generally, it's it's either that she has got a bigger house because she has more children, or the other good kind of default option is, and I'm going to have more. So this idea, she's going to carry oh, yeah, no, on. She does. You know, they're, they're, it's, they usually it's have the, more. It's the double down brazenness. Oh, double and down this on is it. What I'm yeah. saying is, I admire it too. Yeah, I'm going to pump great. more out. These are the these are these are the real free speech heroes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the people expressing themselves and <laughs> lauded for it by the left. And anyway, <laughs> we've had a lovely time. Yeah, we've, we, have, we, didn't even, we didn't get onto half the stuff. Did I we do to anything talk about. you wanted to talk about? No, no. Uh, but I had fun. But um, we did lobster bisque. I what we did do lobster. 
auto diddling and potted plants. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reuse. I'm gonna They'll reuse. Stay with you, yeah, no, it's good. You know, every hour of sweater, conversation. I feel a t-shirt coming up. <laughs> auto diddle my lobster bisque. Auto diddle me, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a child's toy. <laughs> <laughs> like tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> Philip Rolpedos in Hollywood. Uh, I've got a friend who makes like comedy gifts, and he it's made the. He made the uh, the kitty fiddle, which is a child's violin, and it says ages five and under. <laughs> May contain small parts. <laughs> it's your, I think it's your impression that. No, is it? Yes, you got to you've got to, you've got to do it with your fingertips. You got to do it with your fingertips. And then like just this. a bit of sand pops out. That's just, an important expression for me just, now in my it life. It sprung into my That's head. That's new culture. Well, it, it I think it suggests that um, this person has been masturbating frequently. Uh, you know, often for years, yes. so that all there is left to come out at any given moment is just a little bit of sand. I think that's true of, of guys. You know, the Muslim guys that wear the big white robes down to their ankles. Mm -hmm. I reckon that's the they auto diddle. They're all just just. Yeah, yeah, that. And the other highlight for our talk for me is the is the Ramadan rage eating in the night. Uh, I know. Uh, that's going to stay with I, me. No, I, I I enjoyed it. So the stuff the stuff of a thousand uh, internet memes. Um, Thank you so much for joining me, Katie Hopkins. I think America has been given a, a, a two a, a glimpse at two things. One is how adorable and and wonderful and hilarious you are. What a shit Ellen DeGeneres looks like. Uh, <laughs> and the other, yes, but you look lovely. Um, and the other is um, is what an extraordinarily Orwellian uh, circumstance that you are soldiering on under, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and what a fucking oh, coward a I am for bailing. <laughs> Yeah, you need to get your you're, ass back there, you're the, honey real, you're the real hero here because you're, you're the one getting hauled into the police station for saying sweaty socks. <laughs> sweaty socks. Sweaty socks. Thank you so much, Kitty Hopkins. Thank you very Thank much. You indeed. I've got cold little hands, though. You have got cold I hands. I know. I'm sorry. She's like that. This is a cold this hand. Is really what cold. do I do with it?